What's up, eighth graders? How you doing? I hope you're good. You know, you're going to graduate soon. And in order for you to graduate, you must get 100% on this assignment. JK. All right. <laughs> um, they are giving you a little bit different, uh, different content here with the volume of a sphere. And why is this an eighth grade concept? Um, a little more complex than a seventh grade concept? I'll tell you why right off the bat. This is the formula for the volume of a sphere, and it's got a cubed in it. Instead of r squared or whatnot in the other formulas, this is cubed. And not too difficult, but yeah, let's just take a look at this. This is really interesting. Check this out. To discover the volume of a sphere, which, and you know what a sphere is, it's a, any ball, right? Any circuit. Yeah. Volume of a sphere, imagine a sphere that is cut into two equal halves. These are called hemispheres, just like this, right? Like our Earth's hemispheres. Fit a cone into one of the hemispheres as shown below, like this green cone right here. If you fit a cone into the hemisphere like that, something cool happens. If you fill that cone with sand, or water, or whatever, and you pour the sand into the hemisphere, okay, it's not going to fill up the whole hemisphere, right? It's going to go to about there, this yellow part. The hemisphere we have found, the hemisphere is filled with exactly two cones of sand. So if you fill the cone up once, pour it in, fill it up again, pour it in, you will fill that hemisphere perfectly. So a hemisphere is two cones. And a full sphere, because that's two hemispheres, right, is four cones. So basically, they figured out the volume of a cone, which is on another video. The volume of a cone is one-third the base, the circle, times the height, um, which in this case would be the radius of this sphere. One-third base times the height. And so all you got to do is multiply that by four to get the volume of a sphere. So let's see what they do here. One-third area of the base times the height, which is the same in our example. One-third pi r squared, area of the base, times the height. Wait a second. Why isn't this times the height? Because in a sphere, this cone is such that the height of the cone is the radius of the, of the circle that its base is. And it is the radius of the sphere. So... Now it's no longer r squared, it's actually r times r times r. So the volume of the sphere must be 4 times, so 4 cones, um, 1 third pi r cubed. Or you can also write it like this, 4 thirds, because 4 times 1 third is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So there you go, that's your formula. Here it is, all packaged up and pretty for you. V equals volume of the sphere equals four thirds pi r cubed. Now, you could figure out the volume of this guy. What is this? Spherical storage tank for natural gas. Oh, interesting. You could find the volume of a uh, of a coconut there. You could find the volume of a lot of stuff, right? Now the thing is, what if they give you the volume and you have to figure out the radius? Let me, let me give you an example. <clears throat> the volume of... What's something big and spherical? Someone's head, right? Could be kind of spherical, right? <laughs> uh, let's say the volume of um, Humphrey's head. How many cubic inches do you think is in Humphrey's head? Humpty Dumpty. Let's go with him. Humpty Dumpty. He probably had how many cubic inches? Oh, uh, they probably fit, you know, I'd say 30. The volume of Humpty Dumpty's head is 30 cub cubic inches. What is the radius of his head? Hmm. Well, to do that, you'd have to put the formula for the volume of a sphere. The volume equals, do you remember it yet? 4 thirds pi r cubed. Write the formula and then plug in what you know. Well, we know that volume is the same as 30 cubic inches. I'm just going to put 30 in here. Don't need to put the units. Right? 30 for the volume. 
4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, eighth graders, I want you to get this, this pointer. This is going to help you in algebra next year or whatever. We, we need to get r by itself. You know that, right? We're going to have to get rid of this 4 thirds somehow. We're going to have to get rid of this pi somehow. And we're going to have to get rid of that 3 exponent somehow. Well, first order of business. Let's get rid of the 4 thirds. A lot of you would just say, oh, divide both sides, because there's no plus or minus up here. So divide both sides by 4 thirds. You can do that, but 8th graders, I want, I want to show you this trick, and I want you to become comfortable with this. Instead of dividing both sides by 4 thirds, just multiply both sides. Can you see this here? Multiply both sides by 3 fourths, by the reciprocal. If I multiply 3 fourths times 4 thirds, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 3 is 12. That becomes 1. That becomes obsolete. So if you multiply both sides by the reciprocal with fractions here, then it cancels them out. And that's kind of easier than dividing, I think. So, what is 3 fourths of 30? Is that an easy... Um, 3 fourths of 30. Well, half is 15, so 7 half, 3 times 7 and a half. What's 30 minus it? 22 and a half. All right. Check me on the calculator. Let me know later if I was wrong. 22 and a half over here, because we did that. So, 22 and a half equals pi r cubed. Let's just remember here, what are we doing? Humpty Dumpty has a big head. It's 30 cubic inches. We're trying to find the radius of his head. Right? So we're getting r by itself. Divide both sides by pi now. 22.5 divided by pi. And I do need to get my calculator out because for our next step, um, you're going to have to use your, your calculator to figure it out. Let me scoot this over just a little bit here. Okay. 22.5 divided by pi. I'm going to use the actual pi symbol. It's second. Boom, there's a blue pi right there. Could be different for you. 7.1619, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to put 7.162, round to there, equals r cubed. Now, this is saying that, if you look right here, 7.162 equals r times r times r. What would r be? What times itself times itself again is 7.162? That's, that's tough to figure out. Well, you could do trial and error. What about 2? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Oh. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So that it's got to be a little less than 2. Right? What about 1.8? 1.8 to the power of 3 is 5. Point, ooh, it's more than 1.8. Well, guess what? On your calculator, you, well, you might have to get an app. But depending on your calculator, I don't know. Um, but on my calculator, I believe, and I haven't found it yet. Let me see. Should be here. Um, there's the square root, right, which is this. That's the square root of 9 equals 3, right? Because 3 times 3 equals 9. But we are actually in this problem. We're trying to find not the square root, but the cubed root. Not what number times itself gives you this, this answer. It's what number times itself times itself again gives you this answer. That's the cubed root. And on many calculators, there is a cubed root function. And it might look on yours like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. With a 3 down in there. What is the cubed root of 27? This is kind of one that I just remember. What times itself times itself gives you 27? 3 times 3 times 3 does. 3 times 3 is 9. Times 3 is 27. So the cubed root of 27 equals 3. I shouldn't have wrote, written that there. Right, because the cube root of 27 isn't 3 times 3 times 3. The cube root of 27 is 3. But what is the cube root of 7.162? Well, my calculator, there's the square root 
symbol, but I don't see one with a cube drip, but I know it can do it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 7.162, and I'm going to go to my math and see if I can find, oh, there it is. Look, I go down to cubed root, 3 square root of, and then give some parentheses. Okay, so I have to do that first. Math, cubed root of 7.162. I can put my other parentheses if I want, doesn't really matter. Enter, 1.927. So, let's round that to 1.9. 1.9 is the radius, 1.9 inches is the radius of Humpty Dumpty's head. <laughs> uh, that would be a very small head, wouldn't it? So apparently, normal people's head heads are way bigger than 30 inches, um, 30 cubic inches of volume. Anyway, so I showed all that to you because um, it's interesting, and I would like you to know how to work with that formula. But actually, in this pro in your in your assignment here, um, you've got radius, 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 or diameter, which you got to put to radius, diameter. They are never going to, I don't believe, give you the volume and then make you find the radius. But they might later on down here, and I just showed you how to do that. So, you're welcome. Have a good day. We'll see you later.